morning, everybody. Morning. Blessings to you this beautiful day that the Lord has given us. And I wanted to thank Pastor Meredith and Pastor Ben and to you folks for inviting me out here um, to give a little talk about my healing story with the Lord and his unending love. Um, I have to tell you first who I am. Um, I am a recovering alcoholic and drug addict. Um, I was addicted uh, to drugs and alcohol for 39 years of my life, and I am uh, a little over nine years uh, clean and sober and been with the Lord and uh, standing in front of you. It is nothing that I have done. It's his healing power that has done this. So we talked about the reading uh, earlier. Um, the healing miracles of Jesus, we probably all have some of them to tell, like the vision of the baby on the screen here, one pound, a little over one pound, and is now alive and healthy, one of the healing miracles of the Lord. Today's gospel introduces many sympathetic characters, the distraught father, the wandering crowd, the powerless disciples, the afflicted boy, and of course, our Lord and Savior, Jesus. In the course of this story, Jesus questions, listens, gathers information, inspires, takes charge, helps, teaches, and heals. My own walk with Jesus is truly, truly a story of healing and it is unending love. This is a process that began about nine and a half years ago and continues each and every day. Let me take you back to the early part of my story. Uh, and there's two parts of the story that I like to relate to. Um, the first part of my story is when I was in charge of my life, because I thought I knew everything and could take care of everything. Um, and that's when I was in my addiction of 39 years. Christ was not in my life. My addiction was my God. And I believe that's true with most people that suffer with addictions. That's their primary function. How can we get high? And how often can we get high? There's really no room for the Lord in there. I grew up in Whitefish Bay, an affluent, pretty much white society, and I had a normal childhood. I played sports. I did relatively good in school. Um, and the only thing that's a little bit different than a lot of children is I lost my father to the Lord when I was 12. But other than that, I had a pretty much normal childhood. Um, when I was 18, um, it was legal to drink then, back in the 60s, that was legal. So of course, being in high school, I started drinking. Um, and then the uh, use went to marijuana. And then through the course of the years, it went to cocaine and crack cocaine and other drugs. And I eventually ended up selling drugs. Again, these are the things that I was doing when I was in charge of my life. So what do those things cost me? Uh, a broken heart, a broken family, uh, two divorces. I have two kids with each of my ex-wives. Um, relationships abounding, and most important, my relationship with the Lord. That was non-existent. Back in April of 2006, I started attending St. Matthew's Church, still in the throngs of my addiction. Um, no one knew how I was living or what I was doing. Um, and at that point when I went to church, I, I was seeking to stop my addictions, but still wanted to be in charge. Um, but every Sunday when you go, Pastor Meredith stands up here and says, your sins are forgiven. So in my irrational mind at that time, it's like, okay, all my sins are forgiven. I can start to do the same things again. The evil, the devil at work at every angle with addictions. Um, I have been arrested four times. I've been incarcerated in uh, the lovely House of Correction, which is a small scale prison twice. Um, the total time of incarceration has been a little over a year. First time I was put in the House of Correction, I did not learn my lesson. Again, God was giving me a way out, a way to stop. I was there about four months. I didn't get it. The first time I was out, I was high that day. So um, 
thanks be to God, he gave me one of the greatest blessings of my life. He put me back there again. And at the time, I didn't quite think it was such a, such a nice blessing. I was 56 years old. And it was like, why am I back here? I was going to church, or so I thought I was. But anyway, I had a hit and run accident, and God bless, no one was hurt. But I ended up back in the house of correction the second time. Um, and this is where the miracle of the Lord's healing begins to take place in my life. Um, I was in a working dorm the first time I was there. And so I applied again the second time I was there. Because if you're in prison, that's really what you want to be. You want to be working. You don't want to be sitting in a large room with 60 other gentlemen 23 hours a day. And when you work, you're allowed to leave the dorm for a period of time. So I uh, applied and uh, thankfully was accepted again. Um, and the miracle begins there. I was put in the same bunk that I was the first time. Chances of that happening are very rare. The reason I was put there is because the man next to me was reading The Purpose Driven Life, and some of you maybe are familiar with that. I had read it previously, but had not taken note of the book. So I asked him to borrow it. He gave it to me. I read it from cover to cover, the second part of the healing miracle. The third part is, and I put the book down, and I wrote my pastor and told him who I was, that I was an alcoholic and drug addict, and that I was incarcerated in the House of Correction. And I wrote for two books that are mentioned in the book about Celebrate Recovery. It's a faith-based, Christ-centered recovery program. So he responded back within a few days and sent me two of the books. And I read them, and I started going to chapel, um, which again, now remember, I had not been to church. God had not been in my life. Um, I started attending Bible study within the dorm, and I also uh, started attending the prayer group within the dorm. And I just want to mention again, nothing that I had done. It was all him. I had never, ever done this for 39 years, and all of a sudden I found myself wanting to do these things. Couldn't understand why at the time. Now, of course, I knew that God, in that first step, had taken all the drug issues from me, literally took them. I did nothing with that situation. Didn't go see a counselor when I was incarcerated, nothing. He just literally took them from me. Another miracle, pardon me, another miracle of the healing process. So um, when I got out, the first day I got out, I went to uh, a meeting for Celebrate Recovery and was so touched that I went up afterwards and talked to the leaders um, and told them that I wanted to be trained to be a leader um, because I thought I had an interesting story of how Christ had worked up to that point and was working in my life. Um, so I told them I was from Wauwatosa and they said they had been praying for months to have find someone on the west side of Milwaukee to start a group. The power of the healing of Christ. He puts the whole story together and all we have to do is just literally say yes to him and surrender. And I have a saying that uh, I, I use and some people don't like to talk about fat. It's not a good thing in our society. But spiritually, I'd love to talk about it because the fat is the faith and the trust. Lots of us have faith. I had faith, I didn't have the trust. So the fat leads us to sass, surrender and serve. So for someone with addictions, um, the only way I know that it works is because I'm a vet and I went to all these secular healing programs, the private counseling. Um, I was in a dorm for a certain period of time. I was in group counseling. Nothing worked except the healing power of Christ. That's where it begins and that word, the word ends with me. It's all about him. It's nothing that I do. It's about serving him. So the fat and the sass are huge to me in my recovery program. So we started to celebrate recovery program uh, and still going on. Um, and to this day, um, uh, and I'm going to get through just one more ministry in a second, but um, I'm part of a group that works with the Milwaukee Rescue Mission in their new journey program. They have 30 to 40 men that have surrendered their lives to Christ. Milwaukee Rescue Mission is God-centered, faith-based in everything they do. 
Um, so we have a Celebrate Recovery program for those 30 to 40 gentlemen each week at Redeemer Lutheran Church on Thursday night at 6.30. Um, and I've been with the Lord nine and a half years and I still go to those meetings because it humbles me to hear their stories. And along my journey, I was homeless for about eight months. Now remember, I came from an affluent family in affluent Whitefish Bay, and yet I found myself homeless, divorced twice, no relationship with the kids. So a little bit after that, a gentleman came to St. Matthew's and wanted to start a meal ministry, um, and they were going to the guest house, which is a place that has 60 to 70 men that are coming out of their addiction. So again, the Lord gently tapped me on my shoulder and said, you should probably go there, Chris. You might have something to say to these people. So I signed up and went um, and was so moved that I went every month. We did it once a month, so I went every month. Um, and then one of our partner churches, Reformation, was having a food drive. And so I thought that I had a friend whose father is uh, big in the rescue of the bread ministry. So I asked him for one box of bread that I could take to Reformation Church. And little did I know that that was the beginning of just one more ministry. So along the way, um, Saz's Catering is our, our biggest donor of prepared food. But along the way, and we will start our eighth year this October 15th, um, and, and if you read the insert last year, we did say the, pardon me, God gave us food uh, equivalent to about 265,000 pounds of food that would have been in the uh, earth. And he blessed us with the ability to feed about 105,000 people and donate 50,000 pounds of produce. This started with one box of bread. This year, um, we're partners with Feeding America, which is great. They, they are wonderful people. They believe in feeding everybody if they can. Um, and so we're going to hopefully, um, with God's continued grace and healing power for our ministry, we're going to rescue a little bit over 400 pounds of 400,000 pounds of food, ex food, excuse me, and hopefully feed between 125 and 150,000 people. So I guess the key to that is back in, if you read the Bible, God used the prostitutes, the murderers, and the drunkards, the people that were addicted. He is still using us today. But what we have to do is surrender to him and let him be in charge of our lives so if you know of anybody or if you're um, suffering um, with addictions of any kind, uh, and I say um, anything that keeps us from having Christ at the center of our life is an addiction, please come and talk to Pastor Meredith or Pastor Ben and let Christ heal you or a neighbor or a friend or a co-worker or a relative. About 20% of us sitting here today are suffering with some kind of disease of addiction. That's a pretty conservative statement, but that's about true. If you go through society, that's what we are. So uh, the good things other than the ministry that he lets me be a part of and the Celebrate Recovery program is the forgiveness that he has given my children. Uh, I had not seen my children for over 25 years in my life. Um, I had emailed at the bequest uh, of uh, Pastor Gary from St. Matthew's the one email address I had to my second oldest daughter. And that had been going on for about four years until one day I got a response. And so that response, excuse me, uh, led to um, my seeing my two oldest daughters for the first time in 25 years this past May 15th. So again, the healing power, the miracles of the Lord continue each day. It took uh, my kids a while to forgive me for what I had done and for what I had not been there for them. But the real blessing to me um, is that my mother, who is now 92, who had not seen her grandchildren or met any of her great-grandchildren, as I had not, this past December 20th, got to meet them. We were invited to my oldest daughter's house for a Christmas celebration. So 
Luckily, my mom was still alive in 92, and the Lord lives by herself and uh, is quite a character. But um, the healing power continues. And I met my two oldest kids through the ministry. They wanted to come and serve that day, May 15th. So they walked through the doors of Redeemer Church into the ministry back into my life. And again, it's nothing I have done. It's just saying yes to the Lord and surrendering. So as you can tell, when I was in charge, things didn't go quite so well. Four DUIs, being in jail four times, being in prison twice, losing the relationship of everybody, most importantly Christ. Yet when I surrendered and realized that he probably could do a better job than I could, the miracle of healing began and continues today. So thanks be to God always for that. And I would just like to close in prayer. So could we just all rise, please, so we could pray? Father, please bless us and open our hearts to accept your blessings, not the ones that we want. May our comfort area be where you want it to be, not where we think it should be. Please have your hand upon us always and keep us from evil so we harm not a single child of yours. And as you say, Father, what we do to the least of these, we do to you. Amen. Amen. So God's peace, God's grace, God's love, and God's healing power to each and every one of you today and all tomorrows. And thank you for coming to worship today.